Hi friends. Uh, so today I'm just uh, gonna take the, the introduction to Python, uh, which is a minor for the S3 students. Uh, the code is CST283, and uh, I am Anthony Tijos, assistant professor, Department of Computer Science at Christ College of Engineering. Okay. Uh, so before starting Python, uh, I hope that uh, you have already uh, you are already familiar with the C program. Okay, so we, uh, when I introduce Python to you, I'll be just giving a comparative study between a C program and Python so that it will be easier for you to understand. Okay, so you'll be just comparing with the, how it was in C and uh, how it is in Python. So uh, it will be easier for you to understand. Okay, so that's how I'll be uh, dealing with this topic. So these are the things that we'll be uh, dealing with in Python. In today's class, uh, uh, we'll be dealing with the data types, then we'll be dealing with the expressions, then we'll be dealing with the type conversions. So in this lecture, we'll be dealing with all these three. And uh, in the next lecture, we'll be just uh, dealing with how to write a program in Python uh, using Anaconda IDE, uh, Anaconda Terminal, and also we'll be uh, dealing with how to write program in Python using Jupyter Notebooks. Okay, all those things we'll be dealing in the later session. Now we'll be dealing with these three data types, expressions, and type conversions. Okay, so first we'll move to the first topic that is data type. Okay, data type, uh, you all are familiar with the data types in C program, right? In C program, uh, if I'm say, uh, there are built-in data types and there are data types. So we'll be dealing with the built-in data types or basic data types. The basic data types are integer, plotting point, and character. Okay, we are dealing with, uh, we were dealing with the C. In C, we had a integer data type, plotting point data type, and character data type. Okay, likewise in Python also, will be having same three data types, integer data type, protein point data type, and character data type. Bit similar with uh, all, uh, most of the languages, uh, C, like C, Python also do have three data types, that is integer data type, plotting point data type, and character data type. Okay, so uh, I'll be just going through all these data types uh, very quickly because uh, you are already familiar with all these data types. The first one, it is integer data type. Okay, in integer data type, this is a range in Python. Okay, actually, uh, in C program, integer data type, uh, we used uh, two bytes of memory. Okay, two bytes of memory. Two bytes of memory means it is actually 16 bits. Okay, one byte is 8 bit, so two bytes is 16 bits. In 16 bit, what I'll be doing is, I'll be just allocating one bit for sign. Okay, I'll be allocating one bit for sign and other 15 bits for value. Okay, so I'll be allocating one bit for sign and 15 bit for the values. So actually the range of number of bits or uh, range of bits in uh, C program, it is like minus 2 raised to 15, 2, 0, 2, plus 2 raised to 15. Okay. So, this will be uh, the range. It will be up to plus 2 raised to 15 minus 1. Okay. This will be the range. Okay. Likewise, in a Python, it uses 4 bytes. In Python, it uses four bytes. Python. Similar to C program, uh, we'll be assigning one byte for the sign and the uh, alarm. Four bytes means 32 bits. Okay, four bytes means 32 bits. 32 bits. 32 bits. Okay, so I'll be allocating one bit for the sign and uh, 31 bit for the value. So the range is from minus 2 raised to 31 to 0 to 
2 raised to 31 minus 1. Okay, this will be the range of the integers in uh, pipe. Likewise, uh, the other data type for the Python is plotting point numbers. And uh, in Python, it uses 8 bytes. In Python, it uses 8 bytes. Whereas in C, it was 4 bytes. In C, it was 4 bytes, but in Python, we use 8 bytes of memory for the plotting point number. Okay, so the range is from 10 raised to minus 308 to 308. And it do have a precision of 16 digit. Okay, there are various representation of the floating point. The two representation that can be used are decimal notation in which we'll be just writing as in the usual way and a scientific notation in which uh, it will be in the standard way. Like the first digit, after the first digit, there will be the decimal. Then you will have the decimal values and E followed by the value that comes here that is 10 to the power what comes up in the 10 to the power so if it is 3.78 it is 3.78 e0 that is 3.78 into 10 raised to 0 okay if it is uh, 3780 it will be written as 3.78 e raised to 3 that is 3.78 into 10 raised to 3 likewise if it is 0 0.00378 it can be uh, represented as 3.78 e raised to minus 3. Okay, anyway, the decimal value comes after the first digit. It is the standard form. So this is called the scientific notation and this is the decimal notation. And uh, in Python, we can just be using any of the notation. Basically, we'll be using the decimal notation. Okay, we'll be using the decimal notation uh, for plotting by number. Clear. Next one is the character set. A character set, uh, basically Python, uh, as you see, will be using ASCII encoding. ASCII encoding is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Okay, ASCII encoding, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Okay, so you can, in this table, you can just find out the ASCII characters or ASCII values that is related to a character. Okay, if I am going to find the value of A, capital A, it is, first it is 6, then it is 5. So A, we can get 65. 65 is the ASCII number that's related to A. Likewise, if I'm going for small letter A, small letter A, it is 9. And uh, here it is 7. So 97 is the value that is for small letter A. Clear. So that is the difference. Okay, so th from this uh, table, you will get the value for all the ASCII characters. The so ASCII characters is actually 128. Uh, okay, values. So it is from 0 to 127. Okay, so these are the uh, different data types that is used in uh, Python. It is very much similar to C program. It is just a bit of different in the ranges. Uh, that's all. Okay. So these are the different data types. Hope you all understand that uh, it is very much easier for you to understand because you already know C program. Okay, now we'll move to the next topic that is automatic expression. What are the expressions that are used in Python? Okay, which are the expressions that are used in Python? Uh, here we can see that many of the expressions that are used in Python are already you have learned in C program. The first one, it is negation, that is unary. If I am writing minus two, minus a, all that things. So here, this unary minus symbol is used to define the uh, positivity or negativity of the number. Okay, to sign, sign of the number. To represent the sign of the number, we will be using uh, this negation, unary minus or unary plus. Okay. Then uh, you already know about A star B. A star B is used for multiplication. If I am writing C equal to A star B, what happens if A, the value of A is 2 and if the value of B is 3, the value of C will be 2 into 3, that is 15, will be stored in C. Okay, 15 will be stored in C. Clear. I guess you also know what a division is. Okay, if I am writing A by b for a equal to 6 and b equal to 3 if i'm writing c equal to a by b then what will be the value of c 
3 will be equal to 6 by 3 that is 2 the value 2 will be stored in clear that says uh, quotient okay division is the quotient is the uh, quotient is not the rnc program you have modulus is the rnc program to find the remainder okay if i'm uh, using 3 and 2 a as 3 and b as 2 if i'm writing a by a modulus b so what is the remainder 3 mod 2 that is 3 by, by 2 and what will be the remainder the remainder is 1 so 1 will be stored in c c equal to a mod 2 what will be stored in c one will be stored the remainder will be stored in c likewise uh, there is an addition operation there is also subtraction operation all these operations you already know okay the operations that you don't know is exponent this is the first one and the next one is quotient exponent and quotient okay so i'll just explain what an exponent is in c program if i need to find 2 raised to 5 what you'll be writing you'll be writing a following code like a equal to 2 uh, and you will be writing for i equal to 1 to 5 or uh, equal to 1 i equal to 1 i less than 5 i plus plus i plus plus and in bracket i will be writing a equal to a into 2 a equal to a into 2. If I am writing a equal to a into 2, then what happens? Uh, whatever the values. So here I am writing a equal to a equal to a into a star 2. Okay, so what happens? So what happens is for i a equal to 1, i less than 5, i plus plus. So each time it repeats, it 2 will be multiplied to it. So you will get the result 2 raised to 5, which will give a result of 2 raised to 5. Else you can use a fun function, a built-in function uh, which is POV, which is stored in math dot h 2 comma 5. So you can use a function 2 comma 5, POV of 2 comma 5, power function of 2 comma 5, which will also give you the same result. But instead of this, in Python, there is an operator which is star star operator or exponential operator. So instead of doing all this stuff in Python, what you can do is you can do two star star five. If I am writing two star star five, and if I am writing c equal to two star star five, it is the same as two to five. You need not use a built-in function, or you will not use a for loop for this. There is a direct arithmetic operator which is a star star or exponential operator for this okay likewise quotient okay the next one is a quotient okay so if i'm dividing uh, 3 divided by 2 you know that the remainder uh, 1 to the result is 0 uh, sorry the result is 1 so you know that the remainder is 1 the quotient is 1 if i'm giving a by b or if I am giving 3 by 2, the resultant will be 1.5. Sometimes I need just the quotient. Sometimes I need just the quotient. So for that, I will be using this operator. So if I am writing a by by b, where a equal to 3, a equal to 3, and b equal to 2, a equal to 3 and b equal to 2, then I will be getting the value 1, which is the quotient. To get this quotient value, I will be using this operator that is quotient operator slash slash. This is the quotient operator. So these two are uh, two extra arithmetic operations that is uh, operators that is present in Python, and all the operators that is present in C is present in Python. Clear of this, you understood the uh, idea about the arithmetic expressions. Clear. So these are the arithmetic expressions. Now, oh, type conversion. Okay, type conversion means sometimes you need to convert from uh, one type to another type. Sometimes you need to change from one data type to another data type. To sometimes you need to change a variable from one data type to another data type. Uh, we call it as type conversion. Clear. Okay. 
so there are two types of type conversion so uh, type conversion is of two types type conversion is actually of two types the first one is uh, implicit first one is implicit type conversion the other one is explicit type conversion Ex explicit type conversion or we can call it as type casting explicit type conversion or type casting and there is another one called implicit type conversion okay so what is an implicit type conversion in implicit type conversion uh, the conversion is done by the uh, compiler itself compiler or interpreter itself okay uh, the programmer need not bother about that conversion it will be done uh, by the system we need not bother about it the programmer need not bother about it this type conversion is done by the system okay for example we know that uh, first one okay 3 by by 2 3 by by 2 or 3 quotient 2 3 quotient 2 will give an answer the answer will be the quotient of uh, 3 divided by 2 and the result is 1 you know that it is an integer you know that it is an integer okay and uh, here we can see that it is multiplied by 5.0 here it is multiplied by 5.0 so as in see what happens this star or multiplication is an operator which can be done with the either two integers or two floating point numbers can be done only with either two integers or floating point numbers here the difference is that one is an integer and one is a floating point number which cannot be done by the system the system cannot execute this because one of the operand is an integer and another operand is a floating point number for a multiplication operation to execute, either it should, both of the uh, operands should be, either it should be integers or it should be floating point number. Here, one of the operand is an integer and the other operand is a floating point number. So, this operation cannot, uh, cannot be done. So, what happens? The system explicitly convert an integer to floating point number. Okay, it will explicitly convert this integer to a floating point number. That is 1.0. It will convert it to 1.0 into 5.0 1.0 into 5.0 so it executes 1.0 into 5.0 and the result will be again if two floating point numbers is multiplied the result then will be a floating point number so the output will be 5.0 so this will be the output and this conversion is done by the system so it is called implicit type conversion okay likewise if i am writing 3 by 2 into 5 the result is 3 by 2 is 1.5 clear yeah. into 5 it will give 7.5 so this is also a type conversion here it is also convert into to decimal okay hope you understood so this conversion is done implicitly by the system implicitly by the system okay Next one, you can see that uh, uh, this is a, another type conversion. Uh, next type it is uh, explicit type conversion, or it is called the type casting. Explicit type conversion or type casting. Okay. Uh, so in explicit type conversion, what we'll be doing is uh, you can just uh, convert from one. You can just convert from one data type to another data type and the conversion is done by the programmer done by the programmer we have need to write some code to convert from integer to floating point floating point to character or floating point to integer etc 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 character to integer what all he need to convert it okay so it is also called type casting and here we can see that if i need to get the 6.5 here the programmer is writing integer of 6.5 means it will just convert this floating point number to an integer and the result will be 6 actually the point the decimal value will be chopped up sometimes we need to get round rounding okay to round it off to next integer for that i will be using the next keyword that is round which is also available in the python 
Okay, so here I will be around, writing round, round to 6.75 and it will be rounded up to 6, sorry, 7. If I am writing round uh, 6.1, then it will be rounded up to 6. Clear. So this is how type conversion or explicit type conversion happens. Here, the programmer is writing the code for converting the images. Program is writing the code for uh, converting uh, data type from one to another. So it is called explicit type conversion. It is also called as type cast. Okay. Hope you understood. Now we'll be dealing with the next topic uh, that is functions. Okay. So uh, next topic is functions. And uh, what do we mean by function? I already know what the function is. Okay, so here I will be dealing with printing functions. Okay, we'll be dealing with printing functions. Uh, the user defined functions will be uh, dealing with in the fourth module. Okay, fourth module will be dealing with the user defined functions. But uh, here we'll be dealing with the printing function. What are the functions that is already available in the Python? Okay, so what do you need to know about function? A function is a chunk of code which you do have in it. Is a chunk of code which you do have any. Okay, whatever the value passed to the function is called the arguments. Okay, whatever the value which is passed, if I'm writing uh, factorial of, if I'm writing factorial of two, here I am passing a value two to the function. So two is called the argument or it can be called as a parameters. Okay, whatever the value the function returns is called uh, return type or return value, whatever the value, uh, the value uh, which is sending back by the function is called return value. Okay, so it is not return type, it is return value. Okay, it is a return value. Clear. So if I'm writing a equal to fact of two. Okay, so this fact of two will be returning some value to it. That is called the returning value. Okay. So that is a return value of a function. So there are two parts. The first one is the parameters, parameters which is the values which is passed to the function, and return value are the values that are taken out of the function. Clear? Okay. So here uh, we have uh, written something called uh, we are calling an absolute value, absolute value of four minus five. If I'm calling absolute value of four minus five, what happens? Actually, 4 minus 5 will be calculated first, that is minus 1 will be calculated first, and you will be getting that absolute value of minus 1. Okay, you will be getting the absolute value of minus 1, minus 1. Clear. So, this is how a function works. So you just need to know what a function is, uh, what an argument is, what is a return value is, how to write a function, and all you will be dealing with in the fourth module. So, this is just an introduction of what a function is. Hope you already, already know that. Okay. Now uh, we can say that uh, something is called uh, modules. Okay, is, uh, this modules is uh, similar to some we can call it as a header files in C program. You will be import, uh, you will be including some header file hash include a string dot sorry hash include a stdio dot h hash include math dot h. Likewise, there are some modules which can be imported. Okay. So here, instead of including in C, you will be using the keyword import. Import. Import is a keyword that is used uh, in C program, in Python. In Python, you will be using uh, import. Import math. Where math is the header file. Math is the header file. Here, it is also called math is a module. Okay, math is a module. And import is the keyword that is used to import a math file or include a math file to the uh, python file clear and uh, there is a function called the dir dir of math okay if i am writing dir of math then what happens is what are the uh, functions that are available what are the functions that are available in the math header file will be shown if i am writing dir of math if i am writing dir of math what are the other function that is available in math, it will be shown. Okay, so these are all the functions that are available in the header file math. 
Okay, so here it is. Uh, it is also called as here in Python it is called as module. Clear. Okay. Module is uh, similar to a header file, and uh, instead of include in C program, we will be using import. I M P O R T import. Clear. Okay. And uh, this is how uh, you will be just using the function. So if I'm um, sorry, uh, this is a, a constant which is defined in math.h. P is a constant that is used in math.h. Okay, constant that is used in math.h. So what I'll be using is I can just write a math dot pi. So it will give a value here. Clear. It will give out the constant value, which is already defined in math dot. If I need to get the square root function, I'll be writing math dot. Since it is in the math header file, I'll be writing math dot sqrt of two. So that I will get this square root. Of. I can use the square root. Of. Instead of this, there is another way. So instead of this, if I need to use square root only. Without using math dot square root, if I need to use square root only, I can write like a um, okay like this from math import pi comma square root. If I'm writing like this in from math import pi comma square root, I can just use pi, and I can just use square root. Clear. I am not using math dot pi or math dot square root as there is. Here, I'm not using it like this. I just change it as from math import pi square root. If I'm writing like this, I need not use that math dot operator. Okay, header file dot etc. is not required. You can just directly call the constant, and you can just directly call the function pi and square root. We need not use math dot. Clear. So this all are about the modules. So. Uh, just uh, we'll be just going through what all we have taught in this class. First one, it was data type. Data type, data type was similar to C program. It was uh, integer data type was the uh, floating point data type was the uh, and also the last uh, character data type. Okay, and integer data types used four bytes of memory. Floating point data type used eight bytes of memory. And uh, there is character data type which is similar to that of in C program and it used an ASCII code. Yeah. And the uh, expressions, arithmetic expressions, which are already uh, you know, expressions like uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, unary operator, which is used to denote a sign operation, and uh, modulus operation, which is used to get a remainder. Okay, and also just we just learned two another operator. The first one is exponential operator, that is star star. And also quotient operator that is by way slash slash okay which is used to uh, first one is used to get the power if I need to get two raised to five I'll be using two star star five and uh, for getting uh, square root I mean uh, quotient I'll be using two double slash three so I will get the quotient of dividing with this. Next one is type conversion. Type conversion we already know. Uh, it is of two types. First one is implicit type conversion, and the second one is explicit type conversion. Implicit type conversion and explicit type conversion. Okay, uh, and the explicit type conversion is also called as type casting. Type casting. Implicit type conversion. The conversion is done by the system. While the explicit type conversion, it is done by the Program okay, so all these are the things that we have already, got. and also we dealt with built-in functions. What do you mean by built-in function? All the function already exists. It has uh, parameters and also return values. And uh, there, uh, you can just use some modules. You can just import some modules in Python, and you can just use some of the functions or the constants which are uh, defined inside that modules. Okay, hope you understood. Happy with the class. Thank you.